Hey guys, I'm out here on Lake Simcoe ice fishing today and in the hut here I've got the Garmin LVS 34 live scope on an Echo Map uh, 106 unit I believe and I've got the Lowrance Active Target 2 on the HDS 9 Live. So let's go in the hut here. I want to show you which I think is the best. <music> There you can see we've got the Garmin unit set up with the LVS 34 and the Lowrance unit over there with the Active Target 2 transducer and module. I've been out here for maybe 25, 30 minutes just setting them up, playing with them, and honestly, I'm really surprised with the results that I've got so far. So I'm gonna just go over how we've got the unit set up um, and then talk about what I like about each unit and maybe help you decide which one's gonna be the best one for you. Just want to talk quickly about what we've got set up here. So this is a Garmin Echo Map 106 SV. So it's a 10 inch unit. It's their Echo Map Ultra unit. And then we've got the Garmin LVS 34 transducer and the GLS 10 module. It's all on Garmin's factory mount, just like that with their zero degree pole mount. And that's what we're looking. I'll just pan it around a little bit, just so you can kind of see. One thing I was a little surprised about with this color palette is there actually is still some beam stitching. We've got some fish looks like out here, but you do see a little bit of beam stitching. And that's one thing kind of complained a little bit about on the Lowrance, but actually surprised at uh, how much is on the Garmin still. I think if we play with the color palette a little bit, that may affect things. Now today is February 25th, 2023. And the current software in these units is up to date as of today. I can't remember exactly what it is. All right, and over here on the Lowrance side, we've got the HDS 9 Live, got the Active Target 2 module in there. Then I've got the Active Target 2 transducer on the Lowrance Ice Explorer pole, but I've also got the Rytec mount there. So a couple things about this comparison that really is going to favor Lowrance in my opinion. That Rytec mount that's on there is amazing, super adjustable, really, really like that. The other thing too is the Garmin unit we're comparing it to is more like their mid-tier unit, whereas this is their high-end unit. Now, I know they have the HDS Pro out now, but currently I haven't got one yet, so I'm just basing it off the HDS 9, which is still the, the high-end unit that they have out today. So we've got a higher uh, end unit with the Lowrance. We've got a better transducer mount on it with that Rytec mount. And then we've got the Garmin here, which is just their basic setup. Both units are running on the exact same lithium battery. It's a just a, a cheap uh, 12 volt, 16 amp hour battery that I've got powering both of these up. Now, the interference you're seeing on the screen, that's kind of just gonna be the, the case for this video because we've got two units running at the same time. So I wanna talk about my complaints on the products. So what I've seen so far on the Lowrance is the distance is not as good. There's more beam stitching than I would like. And on the Garmin, it's more menu software um, type things that I don't really like about it. So personally, I've used the Lowrance a lot more than I have the Garmin, but um, this is one of my first times ice fishing with the LVS 34 now. I've used it in the boat quite a bit, but haven't used it out on the ice. So now I personally own the Lowrance unit. That's what I decided to go with. And the main reason was, was because I'm not super serious about fishing. So if I didn't have the greatest live sonar, it wasn't gonna be the end of the world for me. But the reason I went with Lowrance is I just like their menu system. I like how the units operate, how you can navigate through them. I just find this menu system quite a bit easier to use than the Garmin and just a lot simpler to figure out. But in using it, I have found that there are some downsides. So beam stitching is one thing. Detail level in the sonar is another. Um, fish detail has actually been really, really good. And then the other thing that I don't like is the delay on it. And I'll show you that here. Down here so you can see that I'm lifting it up. There's fish coming up. Literally, almost as soon as I lift it up on the Garmin, it comes up. There's next to no delay. So I pulled that school up off the bottom there. And kind of hard to see my lure now with all those fish but there it is so dropping it down you can see the lure lifting it up it's coming up basically right away but there is that delay with the Lowrance so that's one thing I wasn't too happy about it I really haven't seen it cause any issues for me though as far as missed fish or lost fish um, all that much you know I'm sure it's not perfect but I really haven't seen uh, a huge issue so I want to look at rotating the transducer now and I just got my foot on it just to stabilize it but I'm just spinning it around. You can see that the bottom 
is hardly moving. Unfortunately, too, with these Garmin mounts, there's a ton of play in them. Um, so that's affecting it a little bit. But the stabilization is actually working really, really well. There actually looks like a big fish out there. You see the beam stitching, but I feel like it's not as big a deal on the Garmin there. I'm gonna show you the Lowrance doing the same thing. Okay, so over here on the Lowrance, just doing the same thing, just stepping on the mount to stabilize it. And now I'm just gonna rotate that around. So it's not horrible, but I feel like the bottom's a little bit more jittery on the Lowrance. Next thing I wanna show you is the forward range. So if we come in here, and increase that range. I've got the hide menu feature on and sometimes on the Garmin, if you touch too low, you pick that up. Uh, the menu bar, I mean, and not something I'm all that fond of, but I also don't like to have the menu bar on there. So now look at how far out, we're 130 feet out and, and still going. Like, look at this. This is actually pretty incredible for an LVS 34 transducer. I'm just gonna rotate it just so you can kind of see so I would say that's a 200 foot range there. Let's cut it back. I think 150 is gonna be kind of a reasonable range. So there's 150 feet. We're at a 25 foot depth range. Now, obviously we're not getting a whole lot of usable information, but look at how far that thing goes. So now let's try that on the Lowrance. So we're at a 20 foot depth range. I'll just see if I can set that on the Lowrance to 25. Uh, they don't give me that increment. I can't do a custom. So I'm gonna just leave it at 20 and forward range is at 40. So now we're at 60, 80, 100, 120, 150, 200. And clear that screen just so we have a full screen like we did on the Garmin. So at a 200 foot range, we have usable 100 feet, maybe 120 feet but I'm, I'm gonna say 100 foot is basically what you're looking at. So we have 50 extra feet on the Garmin over the Lowrance. And even if we turn up the contrast, it's probably a little high. So that's basically what we're getting. Now, one thing I really like on the Garmin that you cannot do on the Lowrance that is really gonna help you when you're looking at these extended ranges, check out this. Bring up our menu, go into it. We go to Sonar Setup, we go to Layout, we go to compress range. It's currently turned off. We'll turn that on. Now you saw the screen adjust. Look what happened. Come back out. So now zero to 30, 40 feet is taking up half of our screen, okay? The rest is still out to 140. So we can monitor this range out here, but these numbers are a lot closer together, meaning it's compressing everything in. And then the information we actually need is available to us right here. So that's one reason I would say that Garmin has better software than Lowrance for their units. Now, the next thing I wanna show you in the menu here, we go to same spot layout. We have reverse range. So we can actually turn that on or off and that's looking behind us. So we can hide it and this will help us even more. Now, obviously ice fishing, this isn't all that smart in the forward mode because we wanna see what's going on directly below us. But in the boat, now we have even more screen that we can use in that key area where our, our lure is gonna be where we're casting, but we can still monitor further out. So distance is definitely something you're gonna gain and the software controls that you have on the Garmin over the Lowrance, it's definitely a benefit that way. So that's an advantage of the Garmin. What is a disadvantage about the software? Well, just the user interface is not something I'm a huge fan of. You know, if I'm adjusting the range, look at that. I tried to press that plus button and it brought up my menu. Like I said, I have the auto hide button on. So you have to be really exact. Then let's say you press your screen and that menu's not there. You're gonna think for a second, how do I get out of this? Well, now you gotta bring up your menu, hit back, and then wait for it to go away so you can get those on-screen controls again. Using this feature, I understand you can turn this off, but it's also, what's the point if it's so hard to get into? These controls should be a little bit higher when that menu is, is in, in that motion there. With the Lowrance, for example, if I bring up my menu, I wanna get rid of it, I, I can swipe it away. It'll also auto-hide on its own. You can set it that way as well. This color palette we're on on the Garmin isn't my favorite one. I'm just doing it so in this little comparison, we can kind of see you know, a, a little bit more of a fair comparison with the color that we've chosen on the Lowrance there. So let's say we wanna change this color palette. Bring up our menu. So that's two screen presses we just did. 
Now we go sonar setup, that's three, appearance four, color scheme five, and now we can pick whatever color we want. So that's six presses, seven, eight, nine, 10, and we're there. Okay, so 10 screen presses to change the color. Let's see how quick it is on the Lowrance. So we'll go into the menu, press it once, twice, three times, and we've changed the color, okay? So that was five or six. So it's definitely a little bit easier to navigate through and do just some of the basic functions on the Lowrance. And this color palette, by the way, I've heard it will be on the HDS Pro and hopefully on an update for the HDS Live because this is probably the most popular color palette that people are using on the Garmin now. So there's a few reasons in the forward mode why I like each unit in their different respects. You know, again, I think Lowrance is a lot easier to use, but I think Garmin has a lot better software features. And then you've seen the difference just in the distance that we can go with the Garmin over the Lowrance. Now also that delay that we see on the Lowrance and don't see on the Garmin. So there's a couple differences right there. Now, all this said, I think we also have to understand if you're seeing one that you like better than the other right now, that's fine. You should do that. That's the whole point of this video. But at the same time, the one that's not as good in your mind is still really good. Like it's still way better to have that than nothing. And you know, if you have one brand on your boat or maybe you prefer how the Lowrance unit works, but you prefer how the Garmin live sonar works, well then you can do a multi-brand network on your boat, you know? So we gotta understand that, you know, just because you like one better than the other, doesn't mean that other one that you're not so fond of is a terrible unit and you shouldn't buy it, shouldn't recommend it. They're both really good tools that someone is going to have an advantage of. You might have more of an advantage, the other guy might have a more of an advantage, but you have to determine what's the most important thing for you and then determine which unit you should buy. So with all that said, let's switch it over to the down mode and take a look at that now. All right, so I've got them both switched over to the down mode now and got uh, quite a few fish down there. Just lift that lure up so you can see. One thing, you know, I found so far with this down mode is I feel like the Lowrance does have a little bit better definition and detail. I just, I feel like I can see individual fish better. Now it might be the color palette that I'm using, but I do find that it is showing up the, the fish that are down there better. I've got uh, the transducers oriented in the same direction, just so it's a fair comparison, because obviously I'll just show you here, when you spin the transducer around, it does change what you see down there. You know, so actually maybe if I have it like this, it will be a little bit better there. A little bit more info on the garment I'm seeing now. Let me just try that on the Lowrance so you can see. So yeah, I've oriented them now to the same way again. And I'm actually just picking up a little bit better this way, the, this school of fish, maybe just the way that they're moving through. So I don't know, you guys tell me what you guys think is the better definition there. Um, there's a lot of fish down there right now. There's a lot of fish down there right now, as you can see. Overall, I think the Garmin is offering a clearer picture in this color palette. Um, I'm gonna change it back now do my 10 menu presses to change the color. Maybe just scroll through them, see which one is offering some of the best definition. This one here, which is kind of like the Lowrance live site, actually isn't bad. I mean, it's a little bit of a, an annoyance to look at just with all that interference on the screen. But to personally think with all these color palettes um, on the Garmin, that's a big advantage to it. So hopefully with a software upgrade on the Lowrance, we'll be able to get some more colors. That will be a little bit better to, to see um, the definition and detail down there like we can see on the uh, Garmin here. You know, this is a good one too, just to show the beam stitching. There is quite a bit there. Um, as you can see, it's all these little triangles that are put together and we reduce the gain. There you go, there's that right there is one reason I don't like the Garmin software. I think it needs a little bit of tweaking. You got a big fish here coming in. And again, paused my screen, so I gotta go back. I realize this is how I have it set up, but it's an option in there, so I think it should be set up a little bit better than it is. Now this obviously helped out quite a bit. May have had that gain just set a little too high, but I also wanted to really see what we're dealing with down there. I'm gonna go back to that other color palette that we were talking about. So I've really cleaned up that image and can still mark my lure well, still see fish around it. 
So let's go over to the Lowrance now, just for the sake of it. See what we can do there. So on the Lowrance, we don't have a gain setting. We have a contrast setting. Just lower that and right around there, we'll try. Can still mark our lure well, still see fish, but there's just a lot of trails behind those fish is what I would say. You know, it's not as sharp an image. I could play with the angle a bit just to see if that helps. There's a nice beam stitch there coming in. Those two units, the Garmin and the Lowrance here are, in my opinion, the two best live sonars you can get today, the Active Target 2 and the LVS 34. Um, I hope I've shown you a little bit about the menus in them, how they work, the distances they go, the delay, the software on how each unit works. So you can make a more informed decision when you're looking at buying one of these, whether you're gonna be in an ice hut like me or out on the boat. I think there's a lot of uh, information out there and a lot of people are just, you know, so hard set on one brand, but there are advantages to either brand. And, you know, there's some catching up to do, no question. But um, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Which one would you go with? And if you already have one of these brands, would you add that live sonar? Would you look at the other live sonar brands? Let me know in the comments. Really appreciate your views and support and make sure you subscribe for more videos like this one.